Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to TNO, the last season of Europe, for which I'm your host, Italian Mocha Lover. Right now, we have tensions with Croatia, which have boiled over. The situation with Yugoslavia has become untenable despite our best efforts at negotiations and even our most pointed threats. It has become clear from the reports our agents have sent us that Yugoslavia will not only refuse to submit to Italian hegemony, but is actively planning aggression against the Bosnian partisans under our protection. This cannot be allowed to stand, and we have alerted the Regia Escrito along the border to mobilize at once. Our plan is simple, but hopefully effective. We shall use our overwhelming superiority to break through Yugoslavia's lines and capture the major cities, leaving them no choice but to surrender. Our only worry is that the fallout of the breakup of the Triumvirate will prove distracting, but this only hastens our attack. Italy stirs once more. C'est la vie. Let us go in. And we already have a plan set up ready to go. And we shall have a good old time with the <clears throat> Yugoslavians. We shall, we shall do another focus the realities of our situation. For the tertiary sector, GDP growth rate will increase over the pillars. The tertiary sector. While the first and second sectors are slowly recovering from our present circumstances, the third has, as of yet, been unaddressed. This cannot continue. We will allocate funds to the construction of new railroads, banks, shops, and more. Furthermore, we will extend support to already struggling businesses and temporarily lower a few restrictions until the economy has fully recovered, of course. With some intervention, it ter Italy's tertiary sector may yet become a pillar of its economy. And let us head on in and do, hopefully, a pretty good job against the uh, Yugoslavians. <sighs> At least I love waking up in, with TNO and uh, having a little bit of conflict. An exercise in futility. The last months have seen a continuous effort to stabilize the Italian Levant. Yet, as we try, as we as we will try, whether we have used bribes, bullets, or both, it appears the task of achieving a stable colony in the Holy Land is beyond our capacity. Since the bombing of the, his residence, Governor Dalla Chiesa's communications have been des desperately forlorn. The man claims to, be, to remain dedicated to his mission, but her assets in his office claim a backup plan exists to safeguard his life in the case of the governor's collapse. They also speak of the streets of Jerusalem, burgeoning as ever with life, but also with couriers carrying intrigues and plots all over the ancient city. The Duce must decide, should Italy act in the face of futility? The cards were made by... Well, we're maxing this out anyway, so our commitment is going to be very great to the group here. Alright, let's get in there. Oh, we beat the people up in the grab already. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. War in the desert. Oh. We will crush them. Oh, well. Oh, boy. Uh, they're fighting these guys? Um, can I send volunteers? Are we fighting Turkey for reals? It's just these guys. Um... The Kenyan rebellion quelled. Excellent news has arrived from our African colony in Kenya today. According to reports from the Italian garrison stationed in the region and long-standing Mau Mau revolt, organized by the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army, has finally ended. With the conclusion of a better year-long campaign to root out the native fighters, a final fierce battle erupted over a strategic railway in northern Kenya, which resulted in the complete destruction of the local railway station. Following the skirmish, Italian forces managed to locate and destroy the rebellion's last remaining bases of operations. Notable ringleaders of the group, such as senior military official Dedan Kamathi, Kamathi were captured and subsequently executed in the raid, with the end of the organized leadership in the KFLA. It appears that the rebellion shall no longer pose a significant threat to the cohesion of the region. Very good. And now we have the great game. We are on the right, as I thought we were on the left, but that's okay. 25, 1 to 5, 1 to 3. Well, we're going to go big and large when we can. And we've got to try to get more guns. Is there anything else we can do here? Fire the current leader. Eh, we're kind of okay, I suppose, for now. He's Brooks. Oh! Oh, war in the Levant caused political power. That is not good. The Turks, wretched traitors that they are, have gone to war with the governor of the Levant to press their claims in the Middle East. To go to war with Ankara directly would invi invite adverse attention from the Reich, and is not an immediate option yet. We can involve ourselves through other means, sending whatever we can spare in terms of guns, men, and volunteers to turn the tide of war. Um, this is not good. Can I, I, why, why can't we send guys anyways? Oh boy. Well, maybe we'll get some political power once we beat these guys up. That might be pretty good, and we just beat them up. Ah, look at that. I love Croatia under Zvonimir II. Very good. Very, very good. The governor of national salvation. I don't trust these guys, as we probably should not. So there you go. I trust them less than the Germans, obviously. So that'll be good. And Tito and his persons have been defeated. Winter has come to Croatia. We have a couple comms to go through as well. Don't get me wrong, we've got some of them to go through. And we'll talk about them as soon as... Oh, oh... The Brat Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic is gone. Oh, hello. Tertiary sector, nice. Ooh, declining trade. Not bad. More manpower. 
Our GDP growth rate will increase, yes please, many think of Libya as nothing more than a desert wasteland. The truth is, however, there is an incredible amount of rich Greek and Roman history there. Archaeological sites such as Leptis, Magna, one of the most preserved Roman cities in the Mediterranean, are untapped wells of tourism. Even the Sahara Desert has great beauty if one knows where to look. We must show the world the beauty of Libya so that tourists can pour into it and spend lots of money there, with Greek and Roman sites abound. Combined with the great beauty of Tripoli and the Sahara, why wouldn't tourists want to come up to Libya? The fourth shore will surely become one of our premier tourist spots on the planet. Very, very good. Okay, so we have no one down here, which really sucks. Uh, well, yeah, that really, really sucks. Uh, oh, wait, you guys are... What the heck? Why are you going through... Uh, what? What is going... Why? <laughs> Does this make any sense? Okay, Italian victory... Okay, vic victory in Rhodes! Unsurprisingly, our forces have successfully repelled the Turkish advance in Rhodes, though the short conflict was simply a part of a larger effort by Turks to conquer long claimed territories and the chaos following the collapse of the Triumvirate. The victory has been widely publicized by the press and celebrated in Rome. The bravery of the Italian army can withstand any attack, Siano said in a speech from the capital. The Turks could not defeat us in Rhodes, and they will not defeat us in the Levant. This success hardly assures victory in the Middle East or the continued glory of the Empire, but in Rhodes, at least, the Italian banner still flies. Um, okay then. Alright. Looks pretty good. They're fighting these guys. Is Turkey that... Uh, they're not attacking or... Well, they do have a raid, so... Oh, man. I definitely want to get involved. Make t contact with Siemens. Uh, I'm going to close this out because there's no point to do that right now. Fire the current leader. You know what? They could probably try. Optimization? We'll fire the current leader and maybe get someone else. Anything down here? Best of enemies? Not really. Not really. Hey, we're at eight. Not bad, but they still have some time to catch up, so... A new expert for the nuclear program, in order to carry out the state's instructions, a servant must be a number of things, knowledgeable, ideally, about the subject itself and the administrative policies and politics surrounding it. Able to lead and work with others, certainly, but above all, a civil servant must be loyal. For this reason, we have, to, we have removed the previous project leader for the Italian nuclear program, giving him an appropriate position to keep him quiet. The decision now falls on us to appoint a new lead, one superior to the previous. If we choose the correct leader for the job, we can drive the previous or the project of nuclearization forward that much quicker. With all that said, who shall lead? The optimizer? The one will get the gosh darn project done. Bruno Porticordo, the political mastermind, the efficient worker, or the perfectionist. Hmm. The one will get the project done, but I would have done correctly. I like the efficient worker probably the most, just personally, for me. So, let's go with that one. The efficient worker. And we're working at a sluggish pace. Program efficiency. Well, all right. Optimization, efficiency, whatever. All right, up next, after this focus, we shall do tourism and the governance. Uh, sure, why not? The Italian governors have some of the richest history on the planet, with the city of Jerusalem in our hands, and the incredible beauty of Ethiopia. It is clear that we have an amazing opportunity in front of us. Why not invite those who wish to see the glorious city of Jerusalem with their own eyes? Why not let people explore the beauty of the Ethiopian mountains with their families, of course? Such actions will not be free. These tourists will need food, shelter, and tours, and we will make that certain that all the amenities that a tourist could ever want will be present. Such an investment will be expensive, but... It'll pay off, especially with such lucrative destinations. Or oh, making divisions, huh? Well, that's not bad. I don't mind having or creating a few divisions, but we don't need that many. Let's get one more at a time. That'll be fine. We got some improvements as well. Let's grab some infrastructural reserve, which would be nice, and continue down our path towards more efficiency, perhaps. Yes, please. So let's see. Research is looking good. Tourism in the government is looking good. Oh, there are nine. That really sucks. Oh, we're gonna lose if we don't do this. So we'll try it. They'll probably lose Bulgaria, but it is what it is. Regardless. Okay, so a couple comments. Uh, I did say on my Discord server that we would be playing as Democratic Italy. Apparently, you know, I thought we were a democracy starting off with. because someone I thought someone told me that we basically, as Italian Empire, start off as a democracy democracy for some, reason, for some reason. But I promise this. By the end of January 2021, we will have the Democratic Italy campaign for TNO here on this channel. I promise you that. I promise. And hold me to that word if I don't do it. But I... I've already scheduled it in, so we will get the more democratic OFN version of Italy on this channel soon enough. We will, I promise. Mend the declining trade. When the accursed dam at Gibraltar was built, we did not entirely realize the drastic effect it would have on our import imports and exports. Trade through the Mediterranean was, of course, essentially destroyed, and the lowered water levels resulted in widespread drought, but this was not the end. The land formed in the aftermath is an unsuitable, salt, flat, hardly useful territory. But this matters not, for we will not give in so easily. Trade must resume, and there's no other option. We will immediately begin efforts to find new routes and manners in which we may trade with the rest of the world. Uh, good or bad. My bad. Uh, and slowly... 
putting an end to our slowly dying trade routes. Okay, that, I hate how TNO, like, it's not just TNO, but sometimes it's other mods and just Hoi4 in general that just lag really badly sometimes. Oh, it wasn't even auto-saving there, too. Regardless, spend, cut, or slash, slash, there you go. Hey, less than 40 billion, not bad, so. Ooh, what do we have over here? Uh, Arm of the Fatherland, friends. Uh, Germany won three out of five, so I'm not even going to bother with this then. But whenever we play as Democratic Italy, I will have a much better idea of how to do this, so. Nope. Turkish sends its demands. As we have pre decisively lost in the Battle of the Middle East, the Turkish dictator Al Parsalan, Turkish has sent us his demands. In it, he details in exchange for us keeping the Levant, we will hand over positions of the Dodecanese, Cyprus, Lebanon, and the region of Daara. In our current position, we have no choice but to accept the terms sent to us. That's so stupid. We haven't, we weren't, we didn't have enough political power to do anything here. That is so stupid. We don't have the political power to do anything. Hmm. At least they're still under us, but yeah, no, Turkey. Oh man, now I, I hope that there's a path for us. Whenever you know Italy gets an update for us to go to war, with Turkey. Oh, they gotta be put down, man. Uh, let's do the pillars. Let's do them next. The modern Italian economy is held by two primary pillars: industry and agriculture. While both pillars aren't in a dire state, the collapse of the triumvirate requires us to invest more into our domestic industry so that the pillars can successfully do their job of holding up the Italian economy. We must finish modernizing agriculture and tap into the wealth of industry that Italy holds. Of course, our infrastructure will be built even more to support the increased volume of materials that will soon flow through Italy. Our pillars will become unshakable, not even for the strongest economic earthquake will make them fall. Oh, more construction speed? Yes, please. Are we making divisions really this quickly? Holy cow. If that's the case, go ahead and train. But I guess as a consequence, encourage protests? Well, I don't really care about doing that. I mean, we could. Doesn't, I'm not even going to use command power that much anyways. At least as a consequence, we don't have to worry about this for now. So, it is what it is. And when Germany falls apart, we'll feel pretty good about ourselves. Governor Chiesa assassinated. Ever since the conclusion of the Second Italo-Turkish War, the situation in the Levant has gone from a fragile peace interspersed with minor acts of violence to a hopeless status quo of terror, strife, and rabid fever, or fervor, only interrupted by utter catastrophe. Today, as one such calamity has struck early on in the day, Prime Minister Siano received an urgent call from Jerusalem telling him that Governor Carlo Alberto Dalla Chiesa, talented administrator and personal friend, friend, was shot dead by un unidentified terrorists. A hastily written speech about the development had to be delivered to the members of the PNF shortly, and the Duce found himself with little time to truly comprehend the magnitude of what had happened. Scribbling down minor notes about the governor's career into a short obituary, Siena felt a true and muted dread over what would come next. Once the meeting was officially in session, his fears proved to be well justified. Scores and his party of hardlines or hardliners gave him no pause, announcing Chiesa's lenient policies as cause for his untimely death, and insulting everything the man had ever done to sow the seeds of peace instead. They called for Francisco Colombo to be made governor of the Levant immediately, in order to restore order to the province and ensure that Italy's grip on the Levant remains as tight as it can be. Colombo's appointment barely passes the vote with a considerable minority of Abstaining. They cannot concede the appointments to scores of man, but Chiesa's policies could not be supported when the man himself was filled with bullets when they failed. Therefore, they stood in silence as the vote was counted, and Siano's own voice dictated the results. Send in Colombo. Yeah. Oh, wow, we're actually losing political power now. Holy cow. Wow. I love the infrastructure. Uh, let's get some more stability. Maybe that'll help out with political power slightly. The first battle for grain was one of the many battles that Benito Mussolini began in the 20s. While it was successful at greatly increasing production and necessary foodstuffs, it also led to the decline of major Italian exports such as cheese and wine. While it's becoming clear that we must fight a second battle for grain, we must strike a balance. Old farms shall be rejuvenated from the near death. Land shall be cleared for new farms, and we shall provide these new farms with modern agricultural equipment, of course. We will also remind the established farmers that there is much money to be made and not just grain or cereal, but in uh, finer luxuries. This balance might be much harder to strike, but it should be, or should hopefully lead to a more economically independent and prosperous Italy. Wow, how does Italy manage to do all this stuff? Oh, wow, that's really bad. So, Governor Colombo has been installed as Governor. Well, Governor Colombo. Governor. Hmm. Now, Francisco Colombo's methods were by no means less popular, even widely supported in Rome. But one could not say that they were not working. They were not working. 
Jerusalem and its suburbs have been pacified in the span of days, with similar measures taking place in the major cities of the Levant under the eyes of his trusted lieutenants and their black shirt squadrons. For the first time in weeks, news coming from Jerusalem could be described as positive to the regime, and there's no reason to believe that they would not continue to be this way as a governor's special directives regarding various resistance movements and how to best dispense with them showed no sign of slowing down. This week they were concerned about a new and recently discovered cache of Arab explosives east of Gaza and how they would be captured and handled by the week's end. In a half-collapsed mud hut on the outskirts of a small village of Naj, Hanin held on to her two children with all the power she could muster, wailing at the black shirt brutes whenever they asked her where her husband had gone, where he had his belongings, and when he would be coming back. After what felt like years of torment, the kicks and the rifle butts went away, leaving their ha her half-conscious, but alive. Her elder was crying, and so she murmured an old song that she had first heard decades ago to calm the boy. Only moments later, she vaguely heard the sound of bullets outside and instinctively shut her eyes, just in time to miss the sight of explosives being tossed in through the window and the roof of her old home collapsing overhead. Governor Colombo is a suitable replacement. Oh, we begin anti-terrorist activities. I love it. Very good. All right, so what can we do down here? Ooh. Oh, the Holy Land will submit or it will burn. Pull out of the Levant. Crack down on Ergun. Oh, boy. Well, Operation Sion. Oh, boy. Top secret from the lead of informants among the Jewish population, a detachment of the Muti legionaries was sent to multiple kibbutzim with ties to the Urgun in a region contested by the Ugun and Harakin. Our forces conducted numerous entries into civilian homes, gathered suspected Urgun members, and similarly executed them in public, and all about 800 suspects were as executed. We believe this should have been should have had a chilling effect on the Zionist insurgents. Side report: Unfortunately, the Lehi has discovered this action and is incorporating it into the recruitment campaign, declaring it a depraved butchery of the Jewish race. By their Italian oppressors. There is a chance that this will encourage a few members of the Argun to defect to the Lehi, but we do not believe it will significantly accept our, affect our operations. That's a lot. Uh, after the preliminary scouting, a detachment of Muti legionaries located a Palestinian settlement built on land contested by both the Argun and Hakain. Harakain, Harakian, known to contain a Harakian training compound. After some deliberation, a squadron of bombers was sent to the target, deployed approximately 40 tons of incendiary ordnance, destroying the compound. Collateral damage is estimated to be a thousand deaths, and we believe this should have a chilling effect on the Arab insurgents. Though, unfortunately, the radical faction of the PLC has discovered this action is incorporating it into the recruitment campaign, declaring it a depraved butchery of the Palestinian people by the Italian Empire and the Zionist masters. <laughs> there is a chance that this will encourage a few members of the Harakain to defect to the radicals, but we do not believe it will significantly affect our operations an entire village well that probably pissed them off a lot more than what we really originally wanted but you know things happen what else do we have here survey for oh survey for a project yes yes and then we should do modernized agriculture let's see oh interest rates will decrease i like that one a lot Italian agriculture has always been critical to the economy. We've always tried to make sure that the farmers were able to farm successfully, and we have helped the peasants evolve into farmers by modernizing them. However, not all of Italian agriculture is mechanized. There are still some who, or, you know, still some people who use horses to farm, and the idea of such things as tractors are far fetched to them. Thankfully, there are only a few farms that have not been mechanized, so a push to finish modernizing agriculture shouldn't be too expensive. Finishing this modernization of Italian agriculture will be critical to helping advance the Italian economy into the modern age. Of course, we will not merely uplift those who do not have the agricultural technology. We will also help the farmers who have already adopted mechanized agriculture by helping them obtain the newest equipment and tractors, and by teaching them the newest agricultural techniques. These efforts may not be the cheapest, but the returns will greatly outweigh the costs. Let us hope so, my friends. Let us hope so. And over here, ooh. Croatia is not under influence. Oh, wait. At the cost of political power, influence a nation in your sphere. Oh. Well, we're already losing political power, so... Political commitment to the empire, huh? Renewed pillars is nice. The declining trade is not very good. Can we do anything here? No, no, no. Modernizing infrastructure. Benito Mussolini legendarily said that he made the trains run on time. While any good Italian knows that this is obviously true, the fact remains that even if a train runs on time, it can still make it take or take a very long time to reach its destination. Many Italian railways are beginning to age, and there are also too many steam locomotives to, still in use, especially when diesel and electric trains are objectively superior. We must rectify this issue by modernizing our railway system by and by phasing out the old trains, of course. We cannot focus purely on trains if we are modernizing infrastructure. The Italian roads, the pride and glory of the old Roman Empire, must be modernized as well. New roads shall be built across the Adriatic salt flats, and existing roads shall be upgraded to reflect a new and modern Italy. Our infrastructure efforts shall lead to a more interconnected Italian economy, an easier trade, bolstering our economy to heights once thought impossible. Very good. 
Not bad, not bad. So, oh, 3.3, it was, I think, 3.8%, but that's looking a little bit nicer now. Roads to destruction ever since the death of Am Amadeo. Partisan activities within the Horn of Africa have picked up immensely and only continue to escalate in recent days. They've started to target infrastructure within the colony, roads, rails, and even dockyards. A major stretch of the famed Imperial Road has been blown sky-high by local militant groups. Investigators who arrived on the scene concluded that satchel charges were planted 15 meters apart from each other, exploding sequentially and having left potholes in the, si the sides of a house. This demonstrative act of terrorism has halted any transport of goods on the road for what is likely to be indefinitely until the resources to fix the road are allocated, and with East Africa stretched to the breaking point already, it's clear Italy will have to step in once again. While fixing the road is certainly the priority, it is also believed that the partisans will ramp up such attacks and increase their severity. It would be beneficial if the Italian Commission boosted their support of the colonial administration, but this could prove too costly. The fate of East Africa hangs in the balance? Um, does that affect our political power? It actually probably does, yeah. It probably, probably does. Declining trade, exerting influence. Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm. That's not good. Political interference, huh? Oh, well, influence the nation? Well, okay, Croatia's gone now. Uh, so what do we have down here? One, two... Oh. Fund the project? Sure. Fire the leader. Oh, no, we already, they're already doing okay down there. Crackdown? If we do that again, what, what happens? Does anything happen? Yeah, Italy... This is why I didn't play Italy was my first nation here, because it is so seemingly maybe a little bugged or a little odd, but incentivize the IRI's projects. IRI has been a valuable asset to Italy in the past, and perhaps with our current economic struggles, it can be an even greater one. We will begin efforts to extend RI, RI, IRI's power and jurisdiction. Additionally, plans will be made to increase political support for IRI. Special bonuses to the IRI's funding will also be made to incentivize further economic support, hopefully allowing us to realize the organization's full potential. With IRI's aid, some time and no small amount of luck, our economy may fully recover from the terrible economic strain that the strain the collapse of the Trainbird has left us. That's, that's not too bad. Oh, yes, please. So that's not too bad. We want at least 1960, because we're not at 65 yet. We'll get there eventually. Uh, Plane-wise, how are we doing? Let's get up some drop tanks. That's pretty nice. Yeah, even if... This is not making any sense. Like, the Hellenic State is good. It's good that they're reliant. But there's not much we can really do, so... Yeah. Pull out of the Levant. No. Nah, it's all good. Center production? Why not? Our efforts to increase our industrial powers have begun to bear fruit, but we cannot stop yet. More resources, money, and manpower must be invested into our industry, or Italy's economic rebirth will not will be snuffed out before it can truly begin. Additionally, we will build further factories, further improve our machines, and further expand our products. We cannot afford prolonged economic issues. Italy must become a center of industry in Europe, where all that we have worked so hard to build may yet be lost. Wow, we're out of, uh... Oh boy, fuel. That's not good. How are our ships doing? Because we got plenty of, uh, XP... Oh, I haven't even, oh, I forgot about fixing the ships here. It doesn't matter. I mean, with TNO and the Navy, it doesn't really matter too much. Wait, military government in the Gulf. And more instability. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is the Roman Eagle losing her feathers? No. That's fake news. Uh, pull out. Fire the current leader. Test our work. So, since we don't have that, test our work. Yeah, I guess we might as well, right? Wait, one, four. I mean, I, I don't even care anymore. Uh, after that, we shall be an ocean-going merchant marine. The Suez Canal remains essentially our only route through into, into the oceans. Thousands of Italian families depend on the imports and exports flowing in and out of the canal, and we, before the triumvirate's collapse, tax outside use of it. It must be used again to its fullest extent. Our merchant vessels will be given full use of the Suez and will be given escorts if need be. Furthermore, efforts will be made to maintain the Suez and ensure it remains at peak functionality. If our merchant vessels were to be delayed or stopped altogether, our navy and merchants would be useless, obviously. This cannot be allowed. Cock severely injured, so be it. Not bad. Not bad. Really, it's, it's pretty good. I, 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 I like this. Crackdown. Oh, what is this? The coup? When completed, we get 50 political power, but... Hmm. Liberation. Well, you know, just in case that might occur. I want to have you guys go, like, right here. Just in case. Now she's going Navy, Suez, Parala, 
del impero. If anything, it is a Suez Canal that has held our empire together economically. It allows us to get trade and supplies without having to pay the Iberians a hefty fine to use the Gibraltar trade route. The importance of the canal cannot be overstated, as it is the ultimate lifeline of Italy. We must make sure that such a lifeline is properly fortified and that it is totally under our control. Thankfully, Alanthropa has not impacted the ability of the Suez to function, so any maintenance that needs to be done will not be too expensive. The Pearl of the Empire must always stay Italian, no matter what happens. Always, always, always. I don't like losing political power. And ungrate ungrateful men. Despite the Italian commission throwing in all they can afford, at least according to them, local settlers within East Africa have grown tired of the constant chaos surrounding what was promised to them to be a fertile, safe, and beautiful land. They have attributed their current predicament to the belief that the government has failed to provide ample support to them in the, in the, death in the wake of the death of Amadeo, and that bloodthirsty partisans are ravaging their farmers some other fault of the men in Rome. Such accusations are, of course, ridiculous, but the question remains about what should come of it. These colonial subjects are certainly ungrateful, and as such, unruly subjects should not receive benefits by cutting off luxury support such as wines, fertilizer, other shipments and others, they can be taught a lesson. Doing this, however, could very just well worsen the situation and cause more entirely unneeded instability. Cut it off. Reduce some things, but bad subjects don't get traits. Um, uh, yeah, let's not go too extreme on that side for that for now. Let's not go that far. And then the fourth economic power, Japan, America, and Germany. They're, they're the largest three economies in the world. To no one's surprise, they also lead the three primary alliances. However, the fourth largest economy is Italy's. While we do not, while we may not be a major in a major alliance anymore, this does not mean that we are weak. Our economy prospers for the first time in years. And while we may never be number one, being as high up as number four is an impressive achievement. Italy has finally begun to assert, it, assert itself globally as, not as a sidekick of the Germans or the leader or the triumvirate, but as, as a strong and prosperous nation. God willing, we will stay this powerful course for a long, long time. Get some more money, a whole civilian factory, and a little bit more stability, which would be nice. Spend, slash, and lay slash. Bulgaria says to Germany. Gosh, the Germans. Gosh darn them. I guess we still get a coup no matter what happens. I mean, if we pull out... That might be best to do. I kind of don't want to pull out, though. I kind of want to see what happens. Oh, boy. What's going on, Sophia? That's still Bulgarian, so... All right. Anything else? 18 days. Well, we'll have this one done before then, and we'll do the realities of our situation. A very worrying thought has dawned upon our general staff. The fall of the trial, where our security as a nation has been greatly weakened, and we are in a disadvantageous position if we were invaded by our old enemies of the Germans or our new ones in our former allies of Iberia and Turkey. Due to this, our generals have drawn up various plans to help secure our position, but advise us that only one can be successfully implemented in the time frame the government desires. We must choose, and quickly. Oh boy, what's going on here? Fire current leader crackdowns? This seems like it's just doing nothing. Like... I'm cracking down, I'm crack, 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 but nothing's really going on. We got one day left, and we'll have an event, probably, probably not a good one, and actually, let's go ahead and stop training these guys for now. Oh, Sasha, thank you very much. How much fuel do we get? Daily gain minus 54, huh? From refineries, from the oil, wow. Alright, so they've rebelled, it looks like. The Palestinian Arab states are ultra-nationalists. Alright, they have no focus street. Uh, we have other comments to go through as well, like, I will place Democratic Italy eventually. That was one of, uh, quite a few of the comments. But another comment was, which path I should go down, and overall, you guys recommended that we go with... Kaniva. Defense plan Kaniva. The third plan drawn up by our general staff in the Kaniva plan, named after the general who led us to victory in the Italian Turkish War, and secured a foothold in the North African coast for us in Libya. The plan is along dealing with Turkey and making sure our government in the Middle East, as well as our nearby interests, are secure against Turkish threat to this end. Our troops are being drilled and dealing with the conditions they will most likely face in the deserts of the Levant, which is a good thing. A PLF GC take over in the Levant with the blood we nursed our, the land. So, do we get any option to take them back? I'm ready to go. I think everyone's ready to go. So... Is this normal for us? I guess I guess this is normal for us to lose all this political power. Which I really don't like. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, air Doctrine. Air Superiority. Uh, air Superiority. Maybe we'll try that one. Uh, I don't normally go down this path, but let's try that one. Light aircraft? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Do we not get any event about that? That seems kind of crazy if we don't. Regardless, let's meet with Dal Dalla Chiazza. Well, he's already dead. What the heck? Uh, Dalla Chiazza, the governor general of the following of the Italian Middle East, has done a fine job of running our government there. We should meet with him to discuss with him the best way to ensuring his position and troops under his command are secure against tricking how to best assist them. Well, I guess we should have taken this one before he died. After that, I'll fortify the canal. The Suez Canal is probably our most important holding in the region closest to the Turks. It connects us to our colony in the Middle East and provides us with an important route for trading and markets. To this end, it has been agreed that a setting up of bunkers and fortifications near the canal, or canal, is necessary to ensure that if the Turkish invasion does come, that the canal will be a tougher nut to crack than it would be otherwise. Good. Friendly fire. Oh, Simru Kaak wins wash elections. Uh, the soldiers were marching down a dusted or dust cake path somewhere in the mountainous and rural Ethiopia. Marching is a strong word. The formation was more akin to a loose shamble of half alive bodies holding firearms. The scream of the sergeant grew more and more hoarse as the long, winding day drew on. An increasingly brutal sun beat down on them, engulfing them in a searing heat. Enrico was one of these men, a young, fresh hero, as some of his squadmates would call him. Enrico had signed up for the peacekeeping force, entranced by a colorful poster he'd seen during a bike ride in a sleepy little Cal Calabrian town. Signed up for the Italian peacekeeping force, he distant lands and traveled the empire. Enrico was not enjoying his little venture, not one bit. He was regularly berated by both his squadmates and his commanders. Commanders forced to use do repulsive grounds cleaning, and worst of all, had to wake up at four in the morning. If he knew what he was getting himself into whatsoever, he wouldn't have dared to enter the recruitment office. But here he was, regardless, stumbling around the Ethiopian desert, keeping a peace that didn't exist. As Enrico was mulling over his decisions on life, suddenly a crack rang out across the valley. The man to his left dropped to the ground, a bullet puncturing his gut. A horde of black men in peasants' clothing came rushing from the ridges surrounding the road. A pitchfork came flying from the crowd, piercing the corporal to, the, to his right chest. Confused and disoriented, Enrico pointed his rifle at the attackers, shakily aiming down its top. His sights locked onto a man's head. He closed his eyes and took a breath. Bang, bang, bang. The shooting went for one on for a seemed like minutes, screaming of men insulting his ears. He could not see the carnage, but he knew it was there for in a moment. A sharp blade came down on Enrico's shoulder. Everything went pit bla pitch black. After action reports later stated a group of native farmers attacked a peacekeeping patrol three italian deaths many injured is this place worth it anymore if i keep doing this okay so we have minus 30.33 so doing this is going to probably make this even worse 0.55 and declining trade exerting influence political interference does this really add up to that much i don't see it in here at all declining trade is one thing king umberto fading fascism exerting i guess exerting influence might be it when your draft doesn't do it, pluralism, public education, political interference. So, there's exerting influence, and that's probably what it is, but still. Uh, and we'll do reports of garrisons. Within our colonies of East Africa and the Middle East, the military leaders have been asking for support and, and an increased troop presence in the colonies. While we have mostly ignored them due to our previous feelings of security in these regions, with the new move in our position, it is probably a good idea to send more reserve troops to these colonies to bolster them and ensure that they can raise enough troops to face down our opponents. And any other research coming along. What can we do here? Survey for a project? Yes, please. And then reinforce the Horn. The African Horn is another important strategic region controlling access to the Red Sea. To make sure the Turks cannot break out in the area, we should build up our ports and air bases in the region to maintain control of the waters and airspace of the area. So in the future when I play as Italy again, I guess we'll just pull out of the Middle East if we lose the war just because there's nothing you can do about it. So, I don't know. And the Eastern Shield. Our region closest to Turkey in the crisis region has now become much more secure, and with the Suez being properly descended and our colonies in the region being bolstered against other threats, our new network of defense plan has been dubbed the Eastern Shield by our troops. Oh, a lot less supply consumption, which is pretty good. Pretty darn good. All right, research is still coming along. It's going to take a, take a while, and that's pretty much this part of the focus tree. Not bad, not bad. Not great, but not bad. <clears throat> All right, let's keep slashing that. Thank you very much. And preparations for the Verona Conference. Over the past few months, the differences between Ciano and party secretary Carlo Scorza has grown untenable. Scorza's vehement opposition to any and all of Ciano's proposals or proposed reforms grinds the government to a halt weekly and all parties realize something must be done. Preparations are being made to hold a convention in Verona to address the future direction of the Italian government and the party. One way or another, reform is needed. Testing in progress. Um... Okay, well, always well, fine. That's fine with me. Just keep going with what you're doing. At least now, if we're not doing a focus, we do get some more political power, which is kind of nice, but still. Oh, and there goes Madagascar. Cool. Other comments include, I should play as Social Democrat or Liberal. Is it Liberal Democrat? Comey. 
I do plan on playing Komi quite a few times since they have so many different leaders that can take so many different paths. So, Komi is definitely on the list, but they're not, at the time of this recording, they're not super high. Uh, does Finland have a focus tree? I keep getting asked that question. I can't never remember, though. I'll say no. Yeah, they don't have a focus tree, which really sucks, but Onega does. Finish Freedom Flyers, and apparently they're a unifier as well, so. Onega campaign someday. Someday. Definitely someday. Right, so, what's going on? What's going on with this? At least we're getting a slightly more political power. That's always good to have, right? And someone recommends we try Goring. Apparently, Goring it has a potential Reichskommissariat if they take over um, Italy. So, out with a crash. Cool. Mutual benefits. In recent weeks, it appears as though the situation within East Africa is mending. Now, new meetings between the general governor of, or governor general of Italian East Africa and various local leaders become, belonging to a number of tribes and native communities have reformed a relationship between the locals and Italian colonizers for the first time since the rule of Amadeo. Coming to the belief that it is better for both sides to focus on retaining order instead of bickering between each other, agreements have been signed to share certain powers and merge administrative powers. It is believed that the Italian measures taken during the crisis have led to these events transpiring, proving that our guidance is in fact valuable to the development of the colony. Now, now, garrisons and locals can work in tandem to fight off partisans and maintain a sense of solidi solidity within the region, or not, not even solidarity. While, of course, tensions remain, it seems that we have weathered the storm that is finally clearing off. Maybe we can lay it off for a while? Maintain it for now. That is good. Uh, how is our construction going? It's going very nicely, actually. Very, very, very good. Increase, increase, increase. This is what's going to provide Italy a bountiful future. Our glorious future, my friends. This is very weird, not even having a focus tree. We don't have any oil. Of course, we're constructing things, and that's what's costing us a lot of stuff here. Ooh, we got something else. Fund the project. Fire the current leader. Fund the project. Always fund the project. Oh, and you guys can kind of hold and hang out. Hold and hang out. At the same time, let's go ahead and import some more fuel so we can train more guys. I like training our soldiers. America? Sure, why not? It's only two factories. That should help us out a little bit more. And let's go ahead and grab this. Large scale exercises. Good stuff. Uh, I'm going to have you guys constantly tr Oh, boy. Uh, we got to talk about this army doctrine and stuff. Ooh. What do we have here? Division to infantry. That's not bad. Actually, I don't mind this too much. Infantry, you can do that. And you're all going to convert to this group. Because this group? That's just terrible. It's going to cost a little bit more, but I don't care. That's... Oh, my... Oh, my bad words. Yeah, they looked really good until you actually saw what was inside those divisions. And holy cow, that is not ideal. Now we're way out of anti-tank. Guns, artillery, the usual. Where's our anti-tank? Here it is. Anti-tank. Well, we need way more anti-tank now. Oof. It's alright, though. Guns not looking too bad. Let's go down to this much. We definitely need them. Uh, we need more of that. And artillery. Where's artillery? There it is. Oh, we're not even making any artillery. Go to four, then. Go to five. And of course, slashing the military budget does lower the, our output, but I don't really care too much. Uh, what matters is a long-term effect. Spence gets more political power too, actually, that way, by doing that slash slash. Good. This might be a little glitch. Hold on. So, let me see if this is a little bit glitched. Well, Siano, he finally gave a speech. Friends, countrymen, while I have always been and will be a member of our great party, the tenets that uphold our country are not set in stone. Siano delivered a speech today in Rome where he urged the evolution of the National Fascist Party. The world in 1921 is drastically different than the one of today. Our great founders could have never predicted the rise of television, modern medicine, and other defining traits of our new era, just like the economy. The government must adapt to our modern reality. His time is approaching. Oh boy. And the old rivals, hello. Yes, take that off. <clears throat> Despite tensions men mending within most of East Africa, there are still inevitably regions which retain issues. <clears throat> One of these is our second oldest colony, Eretria. Native leaders there have developed a rivalry with their Ethiopian brothers and neighbors, dating back centuries long before any Italian boots touched Africa. They are now complaining about the treatment being given to Ethiopians, calling it too good and pandering despite the fact that all of East Africa is currently receiving the same deals. The worst part is that Italian settlers in the region have also begun to side with these beliefs that they are being treated unfairly in favor of the regions deemed more important. It would be impossible to pr improve their treatment individually, as that would simply anger other groups in East Africa, unfortunately. The decision has come down to if Italy should pull its troops in from the re region and uh, go, let them go their own way. Some believe this is to be ludicrous, but keeping it could be costly down the road. 
keep the troops and maybe we can do more to keep them happy as well. I didn't need political power anyways. And so far, there's not much we can really do regarding our focus tree. And I don't think it's bugged at all because I reloaded the save. So we shall see hopefully very soon. But if not, that is totally okay. So now Scorza meets with his supporters. Party Secretary Carlos Scorza has spent the last few weeks leading up to the Verona Conference meeting with a collection of old guard diehards in the party. While these meetings have taken place behind closed doors, Scorza has deliberately leaked some information to the press. A return to our roots is required, he said in a press conference held earlier this week. We must hold true to our values in this era of increasingly or increasing uncertainty around the world. He needs all the support he can get, in which... Let's see if we can get to the next focus. Now, we have a little bit more manpower just because I did cut off these guys. Um, I'm not making any more divisions just because these guys down here, well, they're lacking just a little bit, which isn't very good, but you know it is what it is. Wow. Something... Ah, it's June 10th, 1963, which probably means that a certain Mr. Schmittler, well, he's probably gone bye-bye. Oh, maybe not. No, no, it, yeah, that's a bit too early for him. The game lags very hard when... The leader of Thailand goes bye bye. Wow, he's got some glasses on. Look at him. Rama the Ninth. The conference begins, though. From all over Italy, delegates, representatives, politicians, bureaucrats, black shirts, and more coming from all strata and organizations of the PNF's massive political apparatus are convening in Verona. The medieval city is draped with Italian tricolors and fascist black flags. Crowds cheer as the Duce's car makes its way through the city, escorted by a small contingent of elite black shirts, before finally reaching the location of the conference. Castel Vecchio, a castle outside of the main urban center built by the Sc Scaligeri dynasty back in the Middle Ages. It is now swarming with curious onlookers, journalists, and armed black shirts manning their posts. The other guests of the conference enter the Castel Vecchioli, Vecchio, Ve Vecchio, Vecchio, with much less ado. Talking and plotting as silently, the black shirts posted around the building stood watch with their rifles in hand, uniforms and suits huddled together in small groups, talking quietly before breaking up and then starting again. In an endless dance around the tables were both were bottles of fancy wines and plates full of snacks are emptied then filled up again, while a politician scheme. Deals and alliances are made and broken in. When all the delegates are called in to, s to sit in the main hall, Secretary Scorza and Prime Minister Siano make eye contact for a second as the latter prepares to take the floor for the conference's opening speech. A tense silence permeates the air, and the battle to decide Italy's future has begun. Woe to the defeated. Suspected Red Brigade activity on conference grounds. While our newspapers tried their best to cover it up, so reports still emerged that three Red Brigade agents were captured this week, snoop snooping around the conference grounds in Verona. They resisted enhanced interrogation and confessed nothing, but we suspect that they were searching for vulnerabilities in the building's security, including black backdoor entrances and exits. The population, already uncertain about this conference, is increasingly wary that this could turn from a show of unity into a fiasco. Raise security at once. And we can file the current leader, but let's not do that. The future of the Min Cult Pop. The Ministry of Cult Popular Culture was founded in 1937 to control and regulate Italy's media and art industries to make sure that they follow party lines, conceived as an answer to the German Reichsministerium of Propaganda. The Min Cult Pop soon instead became a source of ridicule, as a bloated bureaucracy egregiously easy to circumvent, its censorship useless at best, and actually harmful at worst, and its overall efficiency a matter of jokes. Its very name invokes hilarity among the Italian people, as its acronym Min Cult Pop sounds uncannily similar to the Italian word for arse. To amend the sorry situation, many party officials have suggested a renewal of the men called POP. Spearheaded by the Secretary Carlo Scorza, this reform would radically alter the bureaucracy of the men called POP, making it more efficient, more expedient, and most of all, more effective at spreading the fascist values to the general population. The Duce has rapidly shut down such proposals as, as him, along with many others. Feel that it would be more of a way, mere waste of resources, as the Min Cold Pop has largely outlived its usefulness. Nevertheless, this matter has been brought up in Verona and now is being discussed by the Congress. Could they at least change the acronym? Maybe. But probably not. Very good, very good. And I guess this is just normal, in which we have nothing here for our land doctrine, or our land doctrine, our focus stream. Siano speaks out against Min Kulpop. Galezo Siano has addressed the conference regarding the proposal to reform the Min Kulpop, and as predicted, he spoke out against reform in this institution, arguing that censorship in Italy doesn't as isn't as necessary as it was in the 20s and 30s, when the subversive threat of communism and sedition was still a serious threat. Siano has instead proposed that the funds needed to restore the Min Cold Pop be re re redirected to more pressing matters. The Duce went on, speaking out in favor of the Italian movie, literature, and television industries, which have proven to be very profitable and popular abroad, as and the Min Cold Pop is only harming them by slowing down the production of new cultural products and by stifling the creativity and genius of Italian directors and writers. While some rounds of applause arrived from parts of the conference, many fascist politicians were much 
much less enthusiastic about the proposal, fearing a possible deregulated entertainment industry could lead to, as to seditious tendencies spreading more quickly among the population. Everyone loves Itali Italian cinema. Very good, very good. Hopefully we get the next event, and Siano meets with the king. While King Umberto is little more than a figurehead, he has met with Siano this week and endorsed his plans for the conference. Following on the heels of the last month's security fiasco, this move has assuaged many common people that this conference will be a good thing for the long-term stability of Italy. An important meeting, for sure. Oh, someone has been appointed. Oh, the drums beat heavy. Scores that speaks about the importance of the ministry. Applauded by large sections of the parties, Carlo Scores is taking the floor for the first time in Verona, delivering a plan to reform Min Cold Pop, which would take into account the Duce's worries regarding the ministry, while at the same time giving it the importance it deserves. By streamlining the bureaucracy, allowing an advisory board of directors and entertainment experts, and ever so slightly relaxing the censorship, the Min Cold Pop can easily and expediently be turned into a modern and efficient institution. Scores will continue by reminding the conference of the importance of defending and upholding the values of the fascist revolution among the population, and to warn against the dangers of the seditious lavicious and downright degenerate artistic products making their way to the population, corrupting the Italian youth and weakening the strong moral fiber of the nation. While many of the conference were evidently enthusiastic at the secretary's words, many more were just puzzled and somewhat convinced that this is just a thinly veiled power play by scores of. Seriously, change that acronym. Oh, what else do we have here? Survey for a project? Don't mind if we do. Awesome. Uh, well, hold on. Um... Okay. The Grand Council votes on the Minkul Pop. While scores have managed to strong arm the Duce into letting the Grand Council vote about the Minkul Pop reform, there's no guarantee that the proposal will pass, and it's likely that it'll be shot down by the delegates of the Grand Council choosing to follow Siano's stance. However, scores has been gathering support, so victory isn't impossible. But behind closed doors, the Grand Council votes in silence. C and No are written down one by one, and the votes are counted. Scores is probably shot down. Scores is influence growth. So with this campaign, like I said, this is a fascist version of this. So we will be doing a democratic playthrough eventually. I promise you that. I definitely 100% promise you on that. Jet cast, even though Italy, as you can tell, isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Grab some of those things. Oh, looking pretty good here. Light aircraft looking not too bad. Heavy aircraft, not really interested in the heavy aircraft too much. Air doctrine we are working on now with more defensive tactics. That would be pretty good. And we can probably get some more improvements for guns. Scorzo speaks at the council. While Siano was meeting with the king, Scorzo was preparing a speech to deliver to the Grand Council of Fascism. This morning, he took it to stage to rousing applause from the hardline members of the body. Gentlemen, fascism has and will continue to be fascism. No more reforms, placations to the degenerate leftists and liberals, or rumors of democracy. We are united in purpose and aim to stick to the foundations that won us the war and took us to greatness. Maybe he has a point. Or maybe he really doesn't. Oh, basic jet fighters. Improved jet fighters. Very good. Reform the Black Shirts since the March on Rome, voluntary militia for national security, popularly known as the Black Shirts, has expanded its powers. The Black Shirts now enjoy considerable power in Italy, rivaling the Carabinieri's official powers. Black Shirt units are feared for the terror, attacking on occasion American tourists, university students, colonial subjects, and anyone else perceived to be an enemy of fascism. The Black Shirts also constitute one of the most reactionary groups within the PNF apparatus, effectively constituting constituting an old boys network of prominent hardline fascists, especially in the higher ranks. Siano, going into the Verona Convention, wishes to limit the power of the black shirts accordingly. Siano plans on instituting a retirement age and limiting the black shirts' arrest powers severely. Scores are hoping to shore up support among the black shirts and conservative fascists will do his best to oppose these reforms. The stage is set for a potential confrontation between Siano and Scorza, and the MVSN or the MVSM members at the conference has been less than neutral over Siano's proposals. Let's hope there isn't a fight. But if there is a fight, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Ah, uh, we've finally backed his no man power. Very good. Siano speaks in favor of the black shirt reforms. And actually, is there anything else we do? Enemy, enemy, best of enemies, projects. No? There's not even the great game between, I guess, us and Romania or anything like that. But I guess that makes sense since Germany's going to fall apart eventually. Siano rose to the podium with tensions hanging in the air. He opened by thanking the Black Shirts, offering at least lip service to their accomplishments for the last four decades. Siano commended the Black Shirts units who fought so bravely in Africa and Europe, and the Black Shirts who stamped out communist insurgents. Siano had earned the applause of a significant portion of the room, however. Notably, the Black Shirt commanders in attendance held their applause. Following the pause, Siano next moved into condemnation of the Black Shirts' excesses. He condemned overzealous suppression of protesters and dissenters, along with colonial excesses. Murmurs and whispers filled the chambers following this, and several Black 
black-shirted commanders walked out of the speech. Seemingly undeterred by the slight, Siano continued his speech laying out his set of reforms first. He suggested a mandatory retirement age for the black shirts, and what might have been the most pointed words of the conference, condemned a gerontocracy among senior black shirt officers. After this, he suggested remedying the brutality program with a substantial reduction of the Black Church's civil authority, including their ability to make arrests. Siano's speech only increased the tension within the chamber, and with scores of speaking next, the conference seemed wholly on the edge. That didn't make anything better. Alright, and we should have the next event. Oh, Ikeda elected Prime Minister? Well, that's okay. Scores opposed the, the Black Shirt's reform. Scores opened his speech with a long, name by name thank you to each of the present Black Shirt commanders for the long service to Italy, and a clear rebuke to Siano's genontocracy remark. Scores are next to defend the Black Shirts and their actions, arguing that the suppression of disloyalty necessitated occasionally brutal methods. This earned them cheers and applause from Black Shirts in the room. Scores are next launched into a blistering attack on student protesters, seemingly only tangentially related to the subject at hand, albeit closed out with a thanks to the black shirts for stamping them out. Scores then attack the proposal to remove the black shirts from arrest powers. These powers, Scores argue, were so fundamentally necessary to the MBSN status that their removal would in fact spell death for the black shirts and by extension, the, P the PNS control over Italian life. <coughs> Yet again, the black shirts present enthusiastically cheered, while the rest of the chamber's reaction was considerably more tepid. As Scores closed his speech, he took time to target what he described as a shift away from his from ideological fascism that has characterized the conference, and expressed hope that in the upcoming vote, the Grand Council would support the proposal that strengthens the fascist ideology. Fascism needs its enforcers. If we can, I would continue like to train these soldiers, too. Any upgrades? Uh, actually... I don't think you guys had too many things here. The vote on the black shirt reforms, my friends. As expected, the reform proposal was deadlocked and sent on the Grand Council fascism. The vote is expected to be tied in the Grand Council, and both scores and Seattle have attempted to court potential swing voters in the Grand Council. Trust among both factions in the Grand Council is seemingly completely evaporated. And as the Grand Council members begin to vote, any bit of goodwill at the conference seems to evaporate. The Grand Council once again votes with C and no written down, and when the votes are tallied, the black shirt form reform fails. Not bad. Loosening government control over trade unions? Since the dawn of the fascist era, strict regulations have been placed on trade unions across the country. Back in the 20s, a new fascist trade union was set up called the Confederazione Nazionale della Corpo Corporazione Sindicali. National Confederation of Cynical Corporations and the pre-existing trade unions, especially the leftist ones, were banned and their remnants integrated into the Nazi Confederazione Nacional. <clears throat> Originally meant to become one of the pillars of the new fascist state, a bloat of bureaucracy and a shift in power dynamics within the regime caused it to be a tool, become a tool of oppression. Rather than empowerment, especially after the Leggi Fascistissime of 1939 made strikes illegal and further clamped down on workers' rights. The Confederazione Nazionale allows very little actual worker representation and is instead perceived as a tool controlled or tool of control used by the fascist state to prevent the workers from organizing into independent unions, fueling anger and radicalization among the urban poor. <clears throat> The Duce has proposed a radical solution to this problem, breaking up the Confederazione Nacional into smaller, more independent trade unions, allowing for actual worker representation and more autonomy, needless to say. This proposal is controversial, many in the F PNF, among them Carlos Scores, have voiced their strong opposition to it. So solidarity forever? Yes? No? Maybe so? <clears throat> Alright, and the leaders say, what about this? Siano stands on the trade unions. Once more, the Duches addressed the fascists reunited in Verona. This time, Siano's speech wasn't made up of firebrand rhetoric or grand declarations, but cold hard numbers. Production targets, GDP growth, purchasing power, a bombardment of graphs, tables, pie charts that could have taken been taken straight out of an economics textbook. With this data, Siano argued that the Confederazione Nazionale was stifling the growth of the Italian economy by imposing a Byzantine bureaucratic system over the productive aspects of society. Even more worrying, there is proof that the lack of worker representation is indeed leading cause of spreading dissent and anger among the lower classes, which could be fertile ground for the spread of communist extremism. By allowing smaller, more autonomous, and more easily manageable trade unions, all these problems can be solved with an easy move. Some applause arrived from the conf conference, but many were clearly puzzled by the excessive amounts of numbers and figures thrown at them. The economy, you fools, the economy. <coughs> And scores a stance on the trade unions. Carlos Scores has once more spoken out against Siano and Verona. The Duce's plan to reform the trade unions was met with anger by a large strata of the party, many of which felt that a key component of the fascist political edifice was being directly attacked. 
A scores of speech was much less fact-oriented than Seattle's, reminding the conference of fascism's national cynicalist roots, evoking vague terrors of communist specters that still linger in the air, and celebrating all the great things fascism did for the Italian working class. A scores that sung his pain to fascist trade unions, drawing a thundering applause from the conference. However, the weakest part of scores' address was a lack of clear policy proposals to address the problems faced by the Confedera. Confederazione Nazionale, and the woes it brings to the Italian economy. Much murmuring was heard in the conference, but it's not clear if he managed to sway many people to his side. Fascism for the working class? Why not? We love fascism here, right? Totally. Absolutely. 100%. The Grand Council votes on the trade unions. The most hotly contested issue so far resulted in yet another stalemate in the conference with neither Siano nor Scores able to bring enough support to their side to make a breakthrough. Once more to avoid a ref breaking the PNF apart, the Grand Council will have to vote on the matter, the issue, the issue but the air is tense. And the atmosphere is cold. Everyone knows that this vote will have historical influence or significance. Once again, the C and No are written down as dead silence hangs over the members of the Grand Council. Excuse me. Members of the Grand Council reunited together. Once again, the votes were counted and... It was rejected. Yes, for now. It was rejected. And happy August 1st, 1963. Ah, my favorite thing. Slash. Until we have more problems. Oh, and the Acerbo laws. As the Verona Conference enters its closing days, a new and incredibly divisive issue has been brought up. Electoral laws, also known as Acerbo laws or Acerbo laws. Named after fascist politician Giacomo Acerbo, who wrote the law and presented it before the Italian Parliament in 1923, it was designed by the Partito Nazionale Fascista, with support from various right-wing parties to ensure that Mussolini and his coalition had complete and firm control over Parliament. The laws stipulate that whichever party had the majority of votes, provided that they gained more than 25% of the total votes, gained two-thirds of the seats in Parliament. These laws were only used in a single election in 1924, which predictably resulted in the PNF conquering a supermajority in Parliament. Following this, more and more laws were passed to build up the fascist dictatorship and concentrating power in Mussolini's hands now in Verona. Some members of the PNF clo close to Siano proposed a review of said laws, including the original Acerba Law of 1924. Their proposal consists of a few changes of electoral laws while still maintaining the PNF's supremacy could potentially open the door to independent parties running and possibly even defeating the fascists. Needless to say, large amounts of the conference were outraged. Fierce debates arose, with Siano largely kept silent. Still, the debates escalated, with some scuffles even breaking out amongst party members. Everyone, please, keep it civil for now. Still looking okay? Not too bad. Pink and purple on the screen? It's kind of weird, but scores his plots in the darkness. This evening, Carlos scores and a few other important representatives from the PNF have met at a dinner in a luxurious restaurant in Verona's old town. There, in an elegant dining room behind closed doors, all of scores' old guests could witness the secretary's cold, calculated, and terrifying rage. Siano is proving to be much harder to target than expected, and despite everything, much of the PNF still supports the spineless traitor usurping the title of Duce. However, the blowback against the proposals to change the Acerbo laws have provided Scorza with a precious chance. A chance to ride the wave of the descent in the PNF to oust the Duce once and for all, not one step back. The Acerbo laws must be defended at all costs. Scorza made his point extremely clear. The fate of the fascist revolution and of Italy depends on this. Are Siano's days numbered? Perhaps. 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 Oh, God. Uh, let's see. This one... That's his, I thought this one built... Yeah. Military construction speed. Let's go with that one. Even though we won't use it for a while, it's still good to build. For now, or at least research. Is there actually anything here getting worse? Academic base is going slowly up. Uh, poverty rate is slowly improving by 0.25. Industrial expertise as well. Okay, or at least none of things negative, so that's good. Siano meets behind closed doors. After fierce clashes in the conference room died down for the day, with the various delegates going to the hotels for the night, Siano reunited with his closest advisor behind closed doors. A few generals, who have a higher ranking of politicians, a few lesser known names, all worried by the louder and louder voices coming from Scorza and his clique. That is, the final stand. If Scorza manage manages to ride the wave of support to defend the acerbal laws and use the momentum to gain more and more followers, this might be the end of Siano's tenure as Duce. A defensive line must be drawn to stop Scorza's offensive, a compromise solution. Without appealing to the acerbal laws, they will be amended, following or allowing for free or popular choice of PNF representatives in local elections. This is not just a battle over an electoral law, it's a battle over who controls Italy, and the Duce is not willing to give, up, give scores a single inch more. We're in the end game now. Nope, oh, and there goes all the Russian government of Amur. The Grand Council's final vote. After Siano presented a moderate plan to amend the cerebral laws, the chaos in the conference room turned into dead silence. Suddenly, everyone realized clearly that this was not a battle between supporters and opposers of the cerebral laws. It was a battle between Siano and Scorza. Without uttering a word, all of the members of the Grand Council entered one by one. The room was where the room 
the room where the final boat was to be held. After what seemed like an excruciating long time, all the boats were cast. The Speaker of a Council stared for a moment before reading the sheet where the boats were counted and announces the final result. Amended? Maintained. They shall be maintained for now. Not bad. We're at minus 11 billion. Pretty good in my opinion. Pretty darn good. As long as we keep building, building, and making Italy's civilian sector stronger. The final vote. With the speeches concluded, the members of the party lined up to cast their votes in the vote of confidence for Siano. Well... Not legally binding, passing this vote will allow Siano to pursue some, if not all, of his reformist agenda. Once the counting was concluded, Secretary Scorza took the stage to announce the results. The delegates vote against him. Scorza takes over in Verona. So, the Italian public at home and abroad was a shock to receive the news. A surprise proposal was submitted by Scorza to the Grand Council on the morning of the final day of the Verona Conference. Many members of the Council were puzzled when they noticed the Duce's absence, but everything became all too clear when the Secretary's proposal was read out. It was a motion of no confidence, aiming to remove Galezio Siano from his position as Prime Minister of Italy and Duce of Fascism. This was the last stroke of Scorza's political masterpiece, the takeover of Italy with, from within the PNF. The vote was quickly held, with members of the PNF close to Scorza urging to hurry up, and when the votes were counted, the result was announced by the Secretary himself. With the motion passing, Galezzo Siano was relieved of all of his positions in the Italian government and in the PNF. At the same time, an urgent telegram reached Verona from Rome. Scorza's men in the capital were successful in strong-arming the king, much like Mussolini himself did back in the 1920s. His Majesty King Umberto II has agreed to grant the title of Prime Minister to the Secretary of the PNF, Carlo Scorza, and his inauguration ceremonies is scheduled to take place soon in Palazzo Venezia. To immediately after the telegram was received, the Grand Council held two more votes to name Scorza as Duce of Fascism and to call for the rest of the former Duce, Galezzo Siano. Both passed with an overwhelming majority. News from Verona and Rome were, are confused, chaotic, and distressing, but one thing is for certain. The era of Siano has ended. Ave Scorza. <gasps> we have a focus, and the bald man is here. If you'd like to read about him, go right ahead, but let us continue with something here. The Battle for Algeria. Oh, yes. A second of Yorona conference. The new Duce barely took office after the removal of Siano, and already troubling is brewing within his own party. Enthused by the winds of change within the PNF, several high-profile representatives of important organizations of the party have decided to call a second Congress in Verona, convinced that Scorza would be glad to participate. The goal is to set out a program of reforms and measures aimed at reviving the spark of the fascist revolution in 1922, now that the reactionaries and liberals rallying around Siano have been ousted from their previous position of dominance. However, the Duce has yet to issue an official statement on the second Congress, according to some, this might be a thinly veiled power play by members of the PNF who wish to subdue Scorza into obedience. The first challenge of Scorza as Duce will to either allow the Congress or be shut it down. <clears throat> oh boy. Oh boy. And the Verona Conference has ended. An interesting development for Italia. And we still currently fire the leader was as fascism's favors. Scores has pulled many strings and conducted many errands to gather influence in his bed to keep fascism alive. And through his hard work, he's ascertained a large group of friends in power, as now he ties together loose ends and stabilizes his grip on power. A few more favors are to be finished. Wow. Curse the army influence. Wowzers. And some might say Wowzers and Bowsers. Holy cowsers. Oh, trousers, yeah, trousers too. Without the civilian budget boost, how much political power do we get? Minus 0. 0.67? Holy bad words. Ah, good. Get that one done too. Thank you. And, okay, we're good. When's the next research going to be done too? Uh, about two weeks. So that's not too bad. About two weeks. And this will be done within uh, two weeks as well. Do we approve the Congress or shut it down? Hmm. I'm not really sure. With that in mind, though, I want to see when we end this episode, not end this episode, but end this focus, whether we get put, like an event or not. So, ooh, which way do we want to go with Scorza? Do we approve the Congress? Let me know in the comments below. Do we approve it? Or do we shut the Congress down? Because I know there's some support for me to go with the more progressive, uh, fascist routes, or we go very, very hardline fascist routes. So. If with either side, please let me know whether we should do promises of reform or the reminder of their duties if we choose to approve the Congress as or if we choose to shut down the Congress do we do what happens in the PNF stays in the PNF or a matter of national emergency. Let me know in the comments below because I'll be inter I'm interested in hearing about your thoughts. So that'll probably conclude today's episode. If you enjoyed it Please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, 
uh, check out my Discord link in the description below. Keep me, keep remind me that we will do the, the democracy or democratic side of Italy and TNO soon-ish as well, periodically. But regardless, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.